Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, which is emotional abuse. And specifically, why is emotional abuse not a victimless crime? Um, I think this is a problem especially uh, not just in America, but also in other countries. I myself am from the Philippines, and the Philippines, I'm sorry to say, has a bit of a culture of strict physical discipline, and I'm not doing this um, to seek revenge on anyone or to try to just facilitate the cycle of suffering. Um, I'm actually doing this for the purpose of healing and for the purpose of bringing insight into what I see to be a larger problem. Uh, but basically, I want to get down to the nuts and bolts of what emotional abuse actually does to people and how it's actually counterintuitive to what a lot of parents and individuals really want to accomplish with their children and other loved ones. Um, and, you know, I'm not speaking just from my own experience. Um, I happen to love my parents very much and I believe them to be very good people um, who, who raised me properly. But just, I've seen so many instances of emotional abuse in my friends and people I care about, people that I've taught, uh, people that I've gone to church with, and it just is a pervasive problem and really a very complex one that is not easy to solve. And at, at many times, it does feel like there's nothing you could actually do about it. Um, I mean, how do you change an entire culture, right? Um, but that's kind of where I'm coming from, um, just trying to to approach it with just new creative ways of, of thinking and doing um, and just things that that haven't been tried before um, like I, I think with American culture uh, the way that people try to solve this problem is with direct confrontation uh, but that that can be a little problematic because it's usually not one individual that is facilitating everything but it's really it's really the entire group that that where I'm seeing you know these problems originating that it's um, you know it, it has to do with communication it has to do with education just with with self-awareness and just with just being aware of other perspectives um, and I think you know in the Philippines in particular uh, you know people are are very poor and you know they there is a drive to take care of everyone's physical needs but physical needs aren't aren't the sum total of of everything that a person um, needs like there <laughs> there are so many other needs that are invisible that that um, or uh, not not invisible but just but that aren't given enough just enough credit uh, you know people people have a need to be to be loved and to be accepted people have a need to have their feelings and perspectives be validated uh, when someone is going through a difficult time if they they actually want to see that mirrored in the people around them that if you know if you're if you're going through something really difficult if you're very sad you know you on some level you do want your family members and your friends to to mirror your emotions back to you just to, to to let you know that you're not going crazy that that you know that these are very difficult things to deal with and that that you're struggling that you have really a lot of things to unpack and um, you know just taking care of someone's physical needs might not be enough for them and you know this is also a problem in American culture and just in in um, many different cultures it's a multicultural problem but it's just it, it coming coming from a background of of a developing country you know people emphasize those physical needs and then they they kind of just throw everything out throw everything else off the boat pretty much that they you know they just don't give it the credit that it's due and you know these are actual just needs that people have and without them there there are consequences and so I want to talk about how you know 
what what emotional abuse actually does to people. Um, so first, let's talk about what emo emotional abuse actually is. So emotional abuse is basically, you know, it's um, it's name calling. It's uh, you know, being mean to people, being in, um, uncivil to them, uh, being very in invalidating. Um, so this is another another word, another vocabulary word that we use um, in talking about narcissism and just abuse in general. Uh, but basically, invalidation is when you cancel out someone's feelings by basically criticizing them, um, by offering sarcastic remarks, by saying like, oh, but you shouldn't be feeling that way. Like, there, there are so many other people who have so much more than you do in this, um, you know, again, going back to those physical needs, like, you know, you could say to someone, you know, you have a roof over your head, you have food on your plate, you know, you have clothes to wear, and then that's it. And then, you know, I, I almost want to laugh at them that when when they think that that is basically all that a person needs, um, you know, it, it that that doesn't begin to cut it. It's just you know, people need to feel accepted. They need to feel like their contributions are valued. They need to feel proud of themselves. Like they need to to have something to be proud of. Just to to they need to be to be their own selves. Uh, you know, one of the the things with emotional abuse is that um, th there usually is going to be someone, the abuser or the offender, who is in power, and this person could try to enforce their views on everyone else in the group. And it may be that you know this person, um, let's say a child in the family, you know, has a different view or is basically struggling with something that that the abuser is. Um, not aware of, or or is just flat out, um, just in invalidating, just something that that you know might be obvious to another person, but this but the abuser is basically disregarding, ignoring, um, and basically you know not able to to deal with. Like if someone, if a child is, let's say. Um, Let's say you put a child in a swimming pool and the child doesn't really know how to swim that well, but, but you know, let's say that his parent is a world-class swimmer and believes that it should come easily for the child. And let's say that the child is actually, you know, struggling and is actually starting to choke on the water. And this is just an analogy that I'm using. Um, it's not literal, but, but, you know, the abuser could be like, oh, what are, what are you doing? Like... Uh, like you you can't be drowning you're my child like you're you know just just paddle just like this is not happening to you and of course this is, maybe this is a poor example but i'm trying to um i'm trying to give you an example of just how there is a, a certain disconnect from reality that that you know the child could be experiencing things in one way and the parent could be refusing to accept it and refusing to accept the struggle that the child is going through and this is is a is a kind of abuse and you know it, it is difficult for me to put the exact words to this um exactly because because i i'm not trying to to rope people in and just to to cast blame i don't think that blame is particularly useful, um, and and blame I I think is one of the things that that emotional abuse actually um, uses and weaponizes to to keep the victim in a state of perpetual struggle. Um, that wh when you when you blame the victim or just wh when you when you blame a person, you you're refusing to accept their perspective, and you're basically. Um, if, if you're saying that, if you're saying that that the person shouldn't be feeling that way because you know they're weak or they're stupid or you know they're just unskilled or, or not able to deal with it, um, in most cases, like you you could end up silencing the person and the person could still be suffering from it, and it's not actually solving the problem. It's just basically making you deaf to the problem that the person is actually experiencing and what makes it really insidious is that this could continue for for you know days and not just days but weeks and months and years and really the 
th there is such a profound level of just of pain and and just of of suffering and and damage that is incurred when a person has to live like this for for years for their entire childhood even um, and you know this um, like that I I'm just recalling certain friends that that had even worse um, worse experiences than than I've ever gone through and it's just it is such an insidious problem and it is actually not it's not a victimless crime that when when you invalidate someone's emotions you deny them of their experience you deny them of their you know not just of their emotions but of their pain and it, it, you don't actually get rid of the pain the pain just gets pushed deeper inside you it gets it gets pushed into the subconscious and it gets pushed even later into adulthood where it can cause serious problems because then um, when, when you abuse someone emotionally you know it you may think that you're not doing any damage because you know if you're still feeding and clothing the child and if you're still uh, you know, if they're still in one one physical piece and you know has a roof over their head and everything you know they could appear to be fine but they could actually be really struggling on the inside and just really suffering day to day and they're gonna suffer from problems like low self-esteem um, relationship problems just not being able to relate to other people not being able to stand up to uh, bosses and other co-workers and bullies and uh, not being able to voice their concerns um, just not not being able to stand up for themselves, not being able to, um, you know, get their fair share to even even get paid fairly in some cases, um, not being able to stand up for what's right, and just not being able to stand up for morality and for you know goodness and decency and for for human dignity. Like you actually you rob them of their humanity. That it's just it it is such a pervasive problem that that really. Uh, it it kills someone's soul, and just in particular, like I've been in in recent times really studying spirituality and especially um, indigenous Filipino spirituality. Just uh, the the spiritual beliefs of Filipinos before Christianity, before um, the the Spaniards and just the European the Europeans came. Um, they had a rich and diverse culture that was very in tune with nature and with each other and the community um, and in a way that 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 also has reverberations also ha also mirrors you know this this very topic that I'm talking about just on a more universal um, you know cultural um, you know countrywide scale it is invalidation on on a I, I almost want to say a global scale but more just uh, you know, on the scale of the country, that you basically silence this entire group of people that had a very rich history and a very rich past, um, where they they worshipped nature spirits and they they venerated their ancestors. They had a lot of rituals to commemorate special events and to to remember their heroes and their past, and basically when you don't give credit to that past and when you don't allow people to feel what they're going through and to 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 basically honor their perspectives a lot is lost you know you basically lose your soul and um that it just it, it has so many parallels the more the more i study this it just it it strikes me like it really i want to say like it, it pains my heart just to see how much could be lost and and how a person could be still physically alive but they could lose their soul and you know i don't mean i don't mean to get into a religious cosmological argument with anyone here but just speaking on a metaphorical level something is lost and like even if you don't even if we don't agree on all of the literal facts and just all of the um, the concrete figures a lot of a lot of beauty and and sanctity and is lost 
and people are just not at peace and they they have they're going to struggle finding themselves and just being able to relate to other people and sometimes you know it really takes a lot of courage to be able to stand up for those things the things that are invisible that that um you know other people will want to gloss over uh, you know it's very hard for some people to accept that someone else especially someone else that they care about is going through something painful is going through a lot of suffering and so they you know they they try to get rid of the problem and they think that they're doing this person a favor but they could actually be invalidating their emotions and you know that that, that is a kind of emotional abuse and even um like this is a little bit more like on the abuse light side when you're doing it for good reasons but just the the key point behind this is perspective it's like are you taking the other person's perspective into account and are you really listening to them like it's not just enough to try to communicate your points of view uh, when you try to to spoon feed your point point of view to someone else and just to to stuff it down their throat you know you you're you're not doing them a favor like you're not you're not showing empathy to them you're not actually being open to their experience and you are actually denying them of their humanity and that's what makes it so insidious that's that's why emotional abuse is not a victimless crime that you know lives are lost lives are destroyed because of it and just you know it it's also difficult because emotions are not entirely logical and you know, some people that I've talked about this with, you know, again, they do mean well, and, you know, they could be very logical, very put together um, individuals, but in trying to help the other person, they, you know, they, they could it inadvertently be invalidating their feelings and, and just saying, okay, like, you're spending too much time getting over this ex, or um, l let's say, like, you know, it's been a it's been a year since you lost your job, you know, isn't it time for you to stop grieving or, you know, lo losing a loved one or um, just, a you know, any kind of loss. Just if you're not connecting with the person, um, you know, you, you basically don't know what they're going through and they could be suffering. And by, by trying to logic their problems away, like you're you're basically just silencing the person and basically just leaving them to suffer on their own, and um, you know meanwhile, you know you could be patting yourself on the back for essentially nothing because it's it's actually a kind of of blindness of just of of you know refusing to accept the other person's reality, and so it's basically it's not a victimless crime that the victim basically gets their voice taken away and with that voice comes their life and their soul that you know we we are our stories when you take someone's story away you you take their life away like you take the essence of what it means to be human and that's why i think telling stories is so powerful because it basically gives us that that humanity back it, it gives us that decency of um you know, just being able to say to someone, okay, I'm here and I'm going through this and I would really like it if you were to honor my experience just by listening. And um, hopefully you would even take it a step further to just, you know, mirror my emotions back at me. And that, that's actually a psychological term, mirroring. Um, which is something that we see in hel in healthy relationships. Just you know, healthy parents will mirror their children's emotions back to them, so that if their child is sad, you know, basically they could say like, "Oh, honey, like I I get that you're sad. It was very difficult for you to lose, you know, your let's say your pet or your friend um, if they moved away, but things will be all right." But and while that seems simple enough to to say i've known some parents who 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 struggle with that and who basically will say oh you know that friend didn't really mean that much to you like you could make another one or oh we'll just get another pet um you know i'll 
I, I'll just replace that goldfish right away, you know, the very next day or, you know, within an hour. And then, you know, the child could be very confused because then they're like, whoa, what, what just hit me? Like, like, it, someone could be going through something and just, just processing that grief. And by not giving the other person space to experience their own emotions, you're basically depriving them of that experience. And, you know, I think art and um, religion and mythology, the stories that we tell, really is about owning all of those experiences, good and bad, just, you know, light and dark. You know, everything is part of the human experience. And you can't just shield your child from all the badness in the world that uh, you, you know you have to let them experience some of it and you have to if you really want to comfort them you have to let them experience those things and also to experience some of it yourself that that you know sometimes the best way for you to be present with someone is just to listen to them just you know to take in some of their pain and not just to offer immediate solutions and try try to logic it away like if you're there crying because you lost something or someone um you you can't just go up to that person and say oh your feelings are illogical you're spending too much time on this you know we'll we'll replace it for another one you know no, no like that that is is not what the other person needs to move forward you know it could be that they they just need some empathy they need a friend they need someone to be there for them and let them know that things are going to be okay and and you know sometimes sometimes they will be looking for an answer but sometimes they won't be sometimes they you know the answer sometimes the answer might seem too scary for you it might seem like something that you can't provide but but you also don't always need to provide it like it's just sometimes you just have to give it space to exist just to to let them feel what they're feeling and if you don't you know it, it's going to get pushed down deeper inside and it's going to come out and it's going to it's go it, it's going to claim that that time and that energy anyway that you know if you if you deny someone's anger you know it they're going to stuff it in and then it's going to explode same with sadness just um you know it's going to end up taking over their life and so really what i'm trying to say is just try try to be present and and just know that it's not just about the physical world it's not just about physical needs and you know feeding and clothing someone people have emotional needs like they they need support they need company they need they need validation they need to feel pride in themselves they need to have confidence and the, all of this you know has a very real effect in adulthood you know that's basically how you how you build courage how you build resilience in people and if if you went through this very just debilitating or invalidating experience you have to realize that you have to to get those experiences back in some kind of a remedial form that you have that you owe it to yourself to to really rehabilitate yourself into getting that kind of love and support and and validation that you need and you know this is basically what what therapy is about what um what the goal of therapy is is just to be more human and to have space for your emotions um and once you can do that you know the world will start to change that it will just everything will just be a little bit freer and unfortunately you know for many people they they only have these things in their imagination um that they, they some there there are some people i know that don't don't have a single friend or but if i know of them or that they only have me as a friend and they desperately need need love from from their friends and their family and you know just it just if if you're here watching this video um i just i thank you i thank you for 
giving me the the space and the time to be able to express how I feel. Um, and I hope that you can give that gift back to others. Give it back to someone else in your own life. Someone who means something to you. Because it will it will come back to you threefold. And, you know, this is um, the law of karma, um, but also also Christian law and, and just moral law in general, that, you know, what you give will come back to you. And just what... Being, being there for others will allow others to be there for you. Um, and just, you know, please just to be present with yourself and 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 be present for others that you know I can't exactly explain the logic of it but but giving and gratitude is just so important to to why we're here and sometimes you just need to give yourself space to just be present and and just take take stock of everything that is around you and just be grateful for it and then you know try 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 to change things for the better that you you are here on this earth for a reason and it may be if 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 your perspective differs from everyone else's you know maybe it's because you were meant to have a different perspective that you were meant to be different and it's actually your it, it is your moral responsibility to to get your message out there and sometimes it may not be the most logical the most economical way of doing things but if you if if you keep coming back to it and you believe in your message and in what you have to give to other people then just give it you know just give it and be be present to receive it from others, you know, good and bad, you know, pain and joy, you know, happiness and suffering. It's all a part of it, you know, it, it is the Tao. Um, just, it's just, it, it's all part of life. And so, you know, with that, thank you for, for listening to me. just yeah th thank you for thank you for for being present for me and I hope that you can be present for others and that maybe that is your present for others that is your gift to others and I for one thank you for the gift of yourself thank you